The church must be in control. Otherwise, we cannot take charge. Redemption does not make one stupid. The only wise God could have given birth to stupid children. Don't tell me you're suffering because you are born again. That's a lie. You are not born again to be reduced. You are not redeemed to be reduced. Redemption is for distinction and celebration. It is not for frustration. Oh, I'm suffering because I gave my life to Jesus. It's a lie. You're suffering because of ignorance. You say my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's not the devil that's warning anybody. Satan has no power. There's no power. Don't ever say Satan has power. That's an insult to Christ. There's no power belonging to Satan. All powers will be given to Jesus. We are children of destiny. Christianity does not make failures. It is stupidity that makes failures. It says those who we predestined are the ones who we call. And everyone who called it justified. And everyone he justified, he glorified. Romans 8.30. So we are called for glorification. But here is the truth. The Bible says something. That's where I'm going. It says you and I are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of where? Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. It says you are the salt of the earth. It didn't say the salt of the church. It said we are the salt of the earth, not the church. So our born again should not be in church. It will affect the world. Now listen carefully. God said you are the light of the world, not light of the church. It's not in church you will pose. Go outside and tell them you are born again. He said, you are the light of the world. So the world should see you and say, I want to be a Christian. It is not in church you should be displaying your Christianity. He said, you are the light of the world, not light of the church, not church. Don't come to church and tell people you are born again. He said, go outside, let them see you and say, hey, I want to be a Christian like you. He said, we are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We are not supposed to be hidden. We are supposed to be trailblazers. We are supposed to be men of exploits. We are supposed to be envied by people who look at us and say, I want to be like this person. But after this day, that is how you will be. <laughs> that people will look at you and want to be like you. You wouldn't want to be like them. They will want to be like you. But hear this truth and hear me well. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, I'll read 5 to 7. It said, there's an evil which I've seen under the sun. As an arrow which proceeded from the ruler. He said, fully, fully means people who don't know God. Is set in great dignity. And the rich sit in low places. He said, I've seen sinners in high places. Then church people at the low places. And that's what is happening. Church will go to beg sinners and say, can you help me? It will end in our time. He says, I've seen sinners at the top. I have seen servants upon horses. That is, see them, they are the ones using siren, and church people are the ones drinking. And priests walking as servants upon the earth. Say, God forbid. He says an error. It's what? He says an error. For sinners to be at the top. And church people to be down. They say it is an error. He said in verse 10, he said, But wisdom is profitable to the light. That means there's something missing in the life of church people that's making church people to look like beggars. He said, Wisdom is missing. Tell them about wisdom. And wisdom is the principal thing. Without wisdom, you can never be a principal to deal with principalities. Every other thing permitted me is vice principal. The world is controlled by economic power. The entire world. Until the church takes the lead, the world will not follow us. It is the winning authority within human society. We must operate with the wisdom of God to be in charge on the earth. And you know why? 
nature naturally moves towards the area of success. In those days, if you say I school in England, everybody will respect you. The entire world used to go towards UK, true? It was the center of success. When somebody comes and say, the whole village will wait in Africa that somebody went to school in London. They will be blaming Trump for him to come back. All of a sudden, the cloud shifted. Today now, when somebody comes from America, it's as if he's coming from a big place. Because America is the source of success. If they are coming from London, and nobody wants to look at you twice. Boys say, well, I, I'm coming from America. They say, okay, yes, that's good. Now, it shifted to China that nobody even knew before. So, even your family, watch, people come to who has success. Nobody visits a failure. Even when you want to give phone numbers a failure, they say, brother, hold on, next time I collect it. Your story will change. <laughs> but when you're a success, they will tell you, uncle, sister, they say, give me your number. You don't forget? I say, your number, your number. You, you pretend as if you forget. Say, I say, that's your number. Give me, give me your number. Failure is an orphan. Success has many brothers. Do you hear me? You need to see my relations. There are many now. I have relations of I don't know. You know, you don't you know me? Your grandfather and your my your father. They are one. I said, where were all these people? <laughs> I have I have all my relations now, relations who I didn't know before. That's how God will make you a showpiece on the earth. <laughs> In Psalm 104, verse 24. Oh Lord, how manifold are thy works? In wisdom has thou made them all. The earth is full of thy little. He said the whole world is created by wisdom. By what? Wisdom. How do we know? Look at Proverbs 3, 13 to 19. This wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4, 7. He said, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. And the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that I can desire are not to be compared to her. So he's saying anything you're looking for cannot match wisdom. You don't look for money, you look for wisdom. Are you getting what I'm going to say? It's a length of days is in a right hand. So long life is in wisdom. Look at that. In a left hand is what? Where is riches? In wisdom. Which is not in the government. Let's stay carefully. Stop running after government. Run after wisdom. It's in a left hand is money. The money you're looking for is not in the hands of any government. Church people, listen here. You people talk, hear me. Church people hear. The money you're looking for is not in any economy. The money you're looking for is inside the wisdom. It's in our left hand, riches and honor. And yes, it's it says, our ways, our ways of pleasantness, and all our paths are peace. That means when you get that kind of money, you can sleep. It's not the one you get that you won't close your eyes. He said you can sleep in the midst of the wealth. He said, Durable riches are with me. If you read Proverbs chapter 8. That means the kind of wealth that even when you are dead is still going on. Don't see Abraham's wealth. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel is still enjoying it. That is how it will be for you in the name of Jesus. So he says she is the tree of life to them that no hold on her. Happy is everyone that retained her. Finally, verse 19. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth and by understanding has established the heavens. Wisdom is the force behind economic empowerment. What is it? Wisdom. Now hear this and hear me well. The Bible is talking about Jesus who came here and displayed the highest result on earth. Nobody has come up from this result today. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 24, he said Jesus Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Christ is what? Power of God and the wisdom of God. Can I tell you something, church people? Can I tell you something? An average church person fast and pray, never asks for wisdom. Every church man you meet, they say, 
We are casting demons. You've been casting demons since and you're poor. The church has been casting demons and it's in poverty. Look, power without wisdom is standing on one leg. And if you stand on one leg, your leg will pay you after a while. The two must go together. It's when you stand with two legs, you can stand long. If you hold one leg like this, after 20 minutes, your leg will pay you. Jesus has two sides. He has power and he has wisdom. But the church has always been talking of power. Power without wisdom is motor without engine. You can, you can cast out demons and after stupidly act again. The two must be together. That's why church people have been casting out demons and yet nothing to show for it. You go to that, that they look at the church and say, as poor as church like, is that not an insult? It will never be said in our time. Amen. That amen is too weak. Hear this truth, hear me. Behind the economic empowerment is not your career, it's not your location, it is wisdom. Every business today that you can talk of that is explosive began with an idea. Began what? Idea that is visible, that is practicable. And ideas are function of wisdom. Function of what? Wisdom. What makes wealth is not money. Money does not bring wealth. Otherwise, the liver state would have been the richest. Oil does not bring wealth. <laughs> Otherwise, bias and rivers, delta would have been the richest. Are they the richest? No way. Oil does not bring wealth. Otherwise, Saudi Arabia would have been the richest country. They are not among the first ten richest countries with all the oil. Natural resources does not create wealth. So you don't think that, you know, if we have oil, I would have already said lie. What creates wealth is wisdom. So I hear. It is sense that commands surplus. Wisdom is the mother of wealth. The only wise God is the wealthiest God. So it is only the wise people that can be rich. And I'll tell you some reasons for time's sake why the church has not been economically empowered. Why the church has what? Now let, let me say something here that will humble everyone who is a church man. Who owns the entire wealth of the world? You know, if you say God is too far, I, your father? If you say God, it makes you religion. Who owns the entire wealth of the world? Your father? Yeah, make it Your father? Say my father. If God is your father, and is the owner of the heaven and earth, is the owner of the entire world, because the earth is the land, the fullness thereof, how come the people who are not his children are the ones enjoying it? Let me explain this to you. If you are a father, a mother, and your children come to you and say, Mommy, we are hungry. Will you give your neighbor's children food first or your own? You are sure? And God is your father. Are you sure God is your father? You are sure? Then how come the strangers have the thing more than you? I think it's the devil. Nonsense, no devil. It's not the devil. It's stupidity. And today we'll be free from that stupidity. Yeah. I'll give you reasons why the church has not been economically empowered. I'll give you some factors that has made us not to take over the economy. Number one factor, wrong focus. Number one factor is what? We look out for the wrong things. He said they look unto him and they were lighted and they were not ashamed. Psalm 34 verse 5. What makes for wealth is absolute dependency on God. He said, God be the man that trusted in what? In man. Jeremiah 17 verse 5. He said, who trusted in man and make a flesh is up, whose heart departed from the Lord. Listen carefully. Long ago, I will tell you a testimony that will humble you. When God called me to a ministry, I've shared it before. 
And we just came to Paracon newly. Not up to three months. A man carried him in his car. And he had, they had an oil allocation and he was trying to tell me the story. The human part of me came in. Then I've not been like this. I've not understood like this. And he said, you know, um, they have allocation. He showed me the paper. He said they will run into some millions that time. Can you imagine 997? When 1,000 naira is like 100 million to me now. He said this is the millions they will get. And I said, wow. So inside me, that's why many of us say, God, God, God says, shut up, you are telling me lies. Inside me, nobody knew. I said, wow. If this man gets this money, then church will be somewhere. Definitely this church will go up with this kind of money. I said it inside. And I know when God speaks, he said, you mean he is the one now that will sponsor my church? I said, God, forgive me. He said, so this man now is the one who sponsored my own church. And I knew when God spoke. I went on my knees and said, God, forgive me. That was the day I vowed never to turn my heart towards men. Nobody knew. It's only me and God that knew. In, in God, I believe you. Inside your heart, your heart is on somebody. I know governor, I know him. I know this minister, some has some high, is my brother. God said, you mean governor and I is your source? Today you end as nothing. God cannot share his glory. He can use anybody, but he will never allow you to trust any man. If you want God to empower you, put your heart on God. He can use any source. That's where the church missed it. The church is trying to look for our economic empowerment by putting our heart on men instead of God. God could use a Pharaoh to touch Joseph. He will use someone to touch you. <laughs> Joseph did not put his heart on Pharaoh. Joseph put his heart on God. And God gave Pharaoh a reason to look for Joseph. They will look for you. <laughs> that amen is too weak. He said, blessed is the man. That word blessed means empowered. The word blessed means to be empowered. He said, empowered is the man that trusted in the Lord. Did you hear that? And whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. And that spread out the roots in the river. And shall not see when he cometh. That is economic problem, crisis will not affect him. But her leaf shall be green. Don't you see how we are green? Even in the midst of economic growth, we are having money. He said, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. That word drought means famine. It means economic recession. He said, in the midst of economic recession, neither shall sit for you fruit. It no matter the hardship, I'll make a way for him. God is not a man that he should lie. Now step into that realm in the name of Jesus. That amen should be with testimony. Now hear this and hear me well. Our problem is going the wrong way. Going what? Solomon, the wealthiest man in the Old Testament. But the Bible said greater than Solomon is here. Solomon never asked God for money. Never. Never. From 1937 to date, I've never prayed for money. It's not a prayer point. It's stupid to pray for money. You don't pray for money. It's stupid to pray for... If you're praying for money, better come and ask me. I'll tell you what to do. They don't pray for money. People pray for money, they don't get it. God does not give money to those who pray for it. He gives to those who know what to do. So I hear. Okay, since you have been praying for money, have you gotten it? That's not the way out. They don't pray for money. Where do you see the prayer for? Jesus Christ did not pray for anybody for money. Take the whole Bible. Read from Genesis to Revelation. You will see why Jesus prayed for anybody. He said, get money. He prayed for the sick. He didn't pray for people for get money. He told them what to do to get money. He never prayed for one person in the whole Bible. Pray for me to get money. Any pastor who pray for you for, to get money, he doesn't know prayer. He will tell you what to do to provoke it. Then he will not prophesy. So I hear Solomon here did not pray for money. He asked for wisdom. He asked for what? In First Peter three, three to five. Then verse twelve, verse thirteen, God said, "Even money you did not ask for, take it. 
May God add it to you. I said, greater than Solomon is here. Matthew 12, 42. And he said, as the Father sent him, so he sent us. John 17, verse 18. We look for people to help us. Instead of looking for God. So I'll lift all my eyes unto the east. From whence come to my help. Where will your help come from? Are you sure? Then why are you looking for men for help? Say it through. I know you quote the Bible. When it comes to practical things, do you go look for God? Now, who will go pro from? Who will help us now? That's why God left you alone. The day the church moves away from men to him, they will take over. Number two. The reason why the church is not becoming empowered? Lack of patience. Lack of, lack of patience. Patience is the gateway to prominence. Every great person, country, name it, apply this principle. Nothing of value in his real estate. Patience is a factory of destiny. It enhances the value of your efforts and costs to deliver when due. Proverbs 28 verse 20, the Bible says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. That's a patient man. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. All this fast, quick money syndrome is the reason why many people are having problems. Quick, 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 quick. I want to get it. Sit down. Be patient. God will take you through a process before he will empower you. Adam came as a full-fledged man. He made a mistake. Jesus grew. All these balloon dreams without reality, they are nonsense. When God wants to make you economically empowered, he will make you grow from one level to another. The church doesn't want that. Quick, 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 quick. Just make me. Grab money. That is the reason. Every boy that wants to be empowered, be ready to be patient. Be ready to what? Patient. Yes, the idea is great. But that idea will not deliver without patience. There's a common saying, Rome was never built in a day. You can build a bungalow in one week. You can't build a skyscraper in one week. There's always a glorious end. But great patience is applied. Every great tree takes great time to manifest its greatness. The price for corn and cocoa, are they the same? Corn, under weeks, cocoa takes time, but they are not the same price. This make rich quick syndrome is not the way out. Short time investment will never yield long time dividends. If we must take over the economic power, then we must pursue the law of patience. You have to calm down. You have to what? No, people don't want to do business again. Just give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. No, that is not how. Sit down and grow your business. Sit here. Then now, I'm trying to make it as brief as possible. How? To take over the economy. How to take over what? Poverty is not whether you have money or not. A poor man is his mindset. Poverty is not... Well, listen, you are not a poor man because you don't have money. You are a poor man when your priorities are wrong. Was Nigeria rich? Most of you don't know. We were, those of us who are privileged to see 70s, the, the, the dollar, Nara was stronger than dollar. In the 70s, it was 70 copper to a dollar. When we finished school, with 11,000 naira, you have paid your school fees in America. At the highest universities, no, they don't deny anybody visa. Nobody goes to American embassy, they deny visa. In fact, there's no, nobody stands, they beg you. They will give you admission later, before your school start, comes out. This is American embassy you're seeing now. We don't go to Britain with visa. You go to Britain with your passport. 700 naira. Nigeria Airways, to and fro. Our boss today was someone in the Someone called boss today. You take it to travel with your passport. But we didn't have sense. But we had money. Is the money there now? So it's not that if they give me money, I go rich. It's a lie. 
Have you seen any militant who is rich? Give any militant money. Tomorrow they are broke. There's no militant that has money that can hold it. Five months, don't give them money, they are broke. Because it is not money that makes rich, it's sense. So here, how to take over the economy, number one. Sit down and think. Sit down and what? Think. The journey to economic empowerment starts with thinking. Wealth is the product of man's capacity to think. Wealth is proved to be one of the vital products of wisdom. And wisdom has to do with your mind. If all you have is money without an idea, then you will soon be broke. In sitting down to think, hear this. What are you going to think? Well, many of us say we are thinking, but what we are thinking is the problem. We don't think the solution. Now listen. I'm going to tell you, so when I say thinking, not just, you know, you can be thinking like this, say, hey, country hard though. You are thinking, but you are thinking stupidly. That's not what you should think. Make sure in thinking you are following divine guidance. I'm going to explain to you. Divine what? Where we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, it says, Wisdom is profitable to direct. This is how you think. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of wealth. And God said, Come, let us reason together. You know, we read that scripture only for sin. He said, Come, let us reason. Reasoning is thinking. And then the Bible said, if ye be willing, after the will you shall eat the good of the land. So much prosperity has to do with me. I have to think with God. I have to do what? I have to rob my mind with the mind of God. And this is how you rob your mind. I want to be practical in my teaching. Abraham had famine. Who had famine? Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. And Abraham began to think with God. And God said to Abraham, go to Egypt. He gave him a specific instruction. Where did he tell him? Egypt. And when he got to Egypt, he prospered. Through? I'm trying to save time. He came to Isaac. Isaac too had economic recession. And Isaac wanted to go to Egypt. He said, Isaac, don't go to Egypt. Stay here with the Philistines. I'll prosper you. That somebody went to America and succeeded. Does not mean if you go, you succeed. Children of God don't move like that. We move by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Hello. Not every open door is God's door. That somebody went to Dubai and bought clothes. Does not mean if you go to Dubai, somebody will buy. The man's direction may not be your own direction. Abraham, Egypt, Isaac, Philistines, Jacob, Laban's house. Not any of them had the same from the generations. That your father was a lawyer does not mean if you become a lawyer, you will be successful. Have you not seen so 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 chambers? I know chambers has died. <laughs> Are you not seen many chambers? The son and the dead. after the father. That somebody is succeeding in oil and gas does not mean if you enter there, you succeed. That somebody went and he opened the contract and he made it. Tell me if you do contract, you will make it. You will find out what God is saying. And from thinking, the Holy Ghost will give you such directions. So I hear. Okay, look at the man called Peter. Peter was frustrated, fishing, no fish. And Jesus came and said, Peter, cast your net on the right side. For where? John 21 verse 6. That means most of us are on the wrong side. He didn't say cast your net anyhow. He said cast it on the right. It was specific instruction. Let me ask you a question very simple. As a child of God, if Jesus was here physically, and you go to him and say, Jesus, my business is not working. Will you not give you an answer? He will give you an answer? Let me ask you a question. If Jesus was to be on earth, and you go to him and say, Jesus, I came to you, my business is not working. My market is not selling. Won't he give you an answer? He will give you? 
Are you saying that he left us without somebody? Who did he leave us with? When did you go to Holy Spirit last? You find that since you have not gone, it's prayer you'll be praying. Chineke akwara, chineke akwara, chineke akwara, chineke akwara, chineke akwara. Oluwa, Oluwa, God says, stupid. Come on, come to me. Shake your head for nonsense. We are praying to a point we are almost worn out. The church kept praying the wrong prayer. We kept praying the wrong. We have not gone to the Holy Ghost. Yes, we are shaking head. Oluwa, 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 God says, before your head pain, you come down. Tamno, 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 tamno. So we speak God said, I'm dear. I won't, don't worry about yourself. Before my picking you die, ask me a question. We have not asked God direction, but we have been busy praying. Hello. Father, deliver me from the wrong side. Say that to yourself. Ask the Holy Ghost to open your Peter did not have it till he told him right side. Behind lack and want is blindness. Is what? He said, wealth and riches are in her wisdom. A foreigner made a statement. For instance, it may look like an insult. He said, you can literally pick Naira on the streets of Nigeria. Yet Nigerians are so blind they can't see it. <laughs> did you hear what you said, man? He said, you can pick Naira on the streets of Nigeria. Yet Indians come here poor and employ Nigerians and they become multimillionaires. If there's nothing in Nigeria, why would they come here and then be having the petrochemicals and the rest? None of them came with money. They came with only one briefcase. So here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So, take time to find out what God is saying to you. Every part of God's creation carries value. Carries what? Everything God created carries value. Jesus said, cast the net. Open the mouth of the fish. I put money there. So just find out from God where your own destiny is. There's something somewhere for you. So here. Wealth has nothing to do with race. But brain and use of sense. It has to do with what? It has to do with your brain. It has to do with your sense. Number two. To be economic apart. Start Trading ideas. Start what? Start trading ideas. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob got wealth through ideas they traded. To recover our economic power, we need to trade ideas. Our economic sickness is purely as a result of sense deficiency. You know, ACE is called acquired immune what? Deficiency. The reason for poverty with the Christians is sense what? Deficiency. When you know what others don't know, they will definitely pay the price for it. The strongest currency in the economic world is idea. Is what? Just one idea can open up your destiny. And as I'm speaking now, may an idea drop that will change your story. Amen. Let amen be strong. Amen. May God give you an idea that will open you up. Amen. Now listen carefully. An idea is stronger than physical thing. Business has left material things to ideas. The wealthiest men these days don't trade tangible things. Facebook is it physical? Huh? Is there any product called Facebook? Huh? They, they hope you know that it's worth 100 and something billion dollars. Is Google physical? Okay. Where is the product physical Google? Ideas rule the world. The invisible things is what creates wealth now. And the children of God we have access to sort into the Holy Spirit, but nobody said ideas. We just throw ideas away. You know, if I can have this product, I will sell. No. If I can have an idea, I will sell. And God will give you an idea today. Yes. I say God will give you an idea today. Yes. Number three. Be a covenant practitioner. Be a what? 
If you want to take over the economy, be a covenant practitioner. Why? By strength shall no man prevail. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. It's not of him that will not of him that run, but of God that showed mercy. Romans chapter 9, verse 16. The race is not a sunnah to the strong. Sunnah chapter 9, verse 11. Irrespective of all these things, you can't beat the sinner if God is not involved. Because in their own area, you can't be wiser than them. You need the backing of God's grace. And to get the power of God's grace, you must walk by covenant. You must walk by, you must be a tighter. If you don't pay tight, your life will be tight. Abraham paid tight. Isaac paid tight. Jacob paid tight. You can see how they beat their unbelievers. Now, Christians, we don't pay tight, but you still believe that you beat sinners. It's a lie. God will never be involved in your business when you don't pay tight. You must pay, not class, oh, tight. I didn't say class. My grandmother paid class. You know class? You know class? How many of you know class? It's not class you pay. You pay tight. Class is anything you like. Tight is 10%. You know, they call it class. Class means anything you like, you, you pay. Tight is 10% of your income. So here. Because God will never give you idea without tight. Be a giver. Be a what? Give. Because God will only get involved when you are, he knows you use your money to bless a poor. So here. He said, bring all your tithes. Bring what? And prove me if I will not open ideas and pour them. That windows of heaven means I will give you ideas as because you are faithful. Every faithful title does not lack ideas for wealth. The reason many of us don't have ideas is because we are not faithful titles. I said, that shall love the Lord that God with all that heart, with all that soul, with all that mind. Use everything you to love God. Hello. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mark 12, 30, 31. There is it that scattered, yet what? Giving does not make poor. Let me tell you. Giving does not what? No, no, no. Let's see, Christians hear this. If you are not a giver, you won't go far. God will never empower a stingy man. Our God. Read your Bible. There are no stingy person God empowered. All people got empowered, their hands are free. Their hands are what? If your hand is like this, I can't go. God will never empower you as a car. He empowers free-handed people. Job was empowered. Job took care of the poor. True? Abraham had servants. How many? Isaac had servants he was taken care of. If you wanted, they were heavily empowered. If Satan is making you to be poor, watch if your hand is free. Only you, only you for your family, only you and your children. People like that don't get money. Clean money comes for those who are ready to, to give. Number four. <laughs> in what do we come about? Believe in walking. Believe in what? Walking, W O R K. Refuse to be idle. If you want to be part. Cheap money, cheap is destiny. Now hear me, woman. Let no woman be a full-time housewife. It will affect your economic empowerment. God can never bless you if you are doing nothing. Hey, woman, hear me. Hear me. Even if it's what I sell. You know why? God will not have a point of contact to bless you if you are doing nothing. It shall bless the work of your hands. If a woman is doing nothing, she has nothing to be blessed of. I'm a full-time housewife. Yeah. Occupation, full-time. That is the most useless occupation. Never be idle. And then to talk about a fledged, full-fledged man doing nothing, eating his wife's food. That man is a nama woman. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, do something. 
If you want to be empowered. And you know the reason why Nigeria has not been blessed so much? Many people are idle, waiting for government to give them free money. It's against ethics of Christianity. The reason many Americans are poor is because of welfare package. Welfare package affects destiny. People think it's free money. Take any man who takes free money, they are never rich all over the world. And let me tell you something today. If they are giving you welfare package, break out of that cycle. Do you know in the advanced world, including the United Kingdom, if they give you a welfare package, you must not deposit a particular amount to your account. Otherwise, government will come after you to find out why there's the money in your account. So the man has enslaved his destiny permanently. Because if you are receiving welfare, and for instance, they hit 100,000, government will come after you. So if you can get 100,000, why they give you welfare? They will call, they will call you. So the person permanently enslaves his or her destiny because it makes the person to break out. That's why you must be careful of free money. You know, they gave me welfare of every month, 60,000 pounds. You will become a slave for life. You are bigger than that 60,000 pounds. Break the cycle and watch if God will not lift you. And as I'm talking, somebody will be lifted. Yeah. It's if anyone will not walk, let him not eat. Second Thessalonians 3 10. God walked. God walked. You know why walk is very important? God said, Let there be light. Let there be this. When he came to a garden in Genesis 2, verse 8, the Bible did not say God spoke God. It said he planted garden. Look at it. See your Bible. The Lord God planted, not spoke. He didn't speak garden. He plant the Almighty God planted garden. He walked in the garden. He did what? Jesus came in John 9 verse 4. He said, I must walk. Must, not optional. Abraham walked. Isaac walked. Jacob walked. Who will you look like not walking? Your fathers walked. Why will you be idle looking for free money? In fact, never give a person not walking money. Say here. If you give somebody not walking money, they will waste it because they don't know how to earn it. Never give an idle person money. Give 50 million out to an idle person. He will just end on a tambourine. Because he didn't know how to use it. Young men hear this and hear me well. All the young men hear me. Never marry as an applicant. Ask me why. God gave work to Adam before he gave me a wife. No applicant should marry. No matter how small a man should be doing something before he gets a wife. Walk before wife, not wife before walk. Are the young men hearing me? You don't need to look for all your company job. Create one. That's what I'm teaching you. I avoid all this free money. It destroys mentality to think. Walk intelligently and smart. Finally, for today. Are you blessed? Yes, this has to be economically empowered. Number one, what do you do? Yes, Sit down and walk. Yes. You know why you should think? Sit down and say, why is my life like this? Why will I be begging every day, meeting people? Prodigal son came out of poverty through thinking. Why will I depend on my husband? If he cannot give me, I can't buy eye pencil. So the man, I will totally depend on my husband every time he gives me that's only when I can know. This is not life. You are thinking. You are what? Not thinking the problem. You are thinking to move out. I think if I have 50,000, I can start something. What can I start with 50,000? Holy Ghost, show me what I can start with 50,000. And he will begin to show you something. He said, with this 50,000 in your hand, do this. I'll open your door from there. But we don't think this one thing, this thing. What do we feel that? <laughs> feel that whenever I need to buy hair, now I go cut this business. The seed you are throwing away is an orange tree. And that orange tree is trees. And the trees are oranges. But one seed. 
The one you're despising, if you can think enough, is enough to start with. Finally, there's one thing the world lacks. And if you have it, the world will look for you. Do you know it? The entire world lacks what I want to share. If any Christian has it, even in the church, you will look for money. Money will look for you. Many people don't have it. Even tongue speaking, non hearing wearing Christians don't have it. Long scared Christians don't have it. People who don't wear earrings don't have it. It is rare even amongst pastors. Rare amongst members. It is very few that have it. And nobody has it without being marketable. It is called integrity. Every man of integrity is economically empowered. Because even the thieves are looking for who they can trust. Potiphar could hand over the economy of his house into the hand of a man he could trust, Joseph. Integrity. If they can trust you, they can put the money in your church. The world is looking for who they can trust. When you walk in integrity, you are in absolute command. Refuse to be crooked in dealings with God and men. In Proverbs 11 verse 3, hear what the Bible says. Proverbs 11 3, the integrity of the upright shall guide them. And the perverseness of the transgressors shall destroy them. The man of integrity, let look. Even if you are in your office, have Christians today no integrity. They will inflate price and say, True to God. True to God. Now, now the price be this. A child of God, where do you want to go to? You buy something five naira for your MD. You are telling him, sir, sir, I can tell you true to God knows. This is seven, seven naira. It's, this is seven naira. I bought it for nine naira. And he just did opening prayer. The day he will discover, that's the day you are lost. And he will discover because no matter how fire a crooked man goes, it doesn't last. Job made a statement. In Job 27 verse 5, hear it. He said, God forbid that I should justify you till I die. I will not remove my integrity from that the wife knew that he's a man of integrity. And Job was the wealthiest man. The wealthiest man will emerge as I'm talking. Yeah. Are you here? Look, people think of money. There's no job problem. It's only integrity problem. People say there's no job. It's a lie. Where was Judas? Church? Oh, thank you. With all the preaching Judas had, it was still silly. You don't have to be... There are people who don't go to church that have integrity. They are people who don't go to church. They will never touch money. In fact, some people say, well, I don't go to church. Even if you have church money more than people go to church. You want to say, I'll church get money now. I beg, I get money. Okay, but we'll sit down. That's why you have not been empowered. You flit things, change figures, a Christian? No, now. Is there no more heaven? Psalm 25, verse 21. Let integrity and uprightness Preserve me by way on me. What will preserve you is what? No integrity, no dignity. No integrity, no economic empowerment. Let men trust you. They will hand over the office to you. You can be a clerk. Let the manager send you. You bring money. Send you, you bring money. Next time you say, give him all the money to hold. Are you hearing what I'm saying? One of the wealthiest women, if not the wealthiest woman in this country right now, was a fashion designer. That one was a fashion designer from Europe, I won't call her name. She was sewing for a president, a Muslim president, clothes for the wife. 
She was a friend. She was doing fine. But they said she had impeccable integrity. And they were dealing with her. They, if she says, come for your clothes Tuesday, it is Tuesday. Before Monday, the clothes is ready. The people saw her like that and said, wow. And gave her all you well as a military president. She busted. She's the one, if not the wealthiest Nigerian woman, she's the wealthiest Nigerian woman. It was integrity that made that woman home. She was always so clothes. So if I sew clothes, I'll get money. Have integrity. The man we who what we used to bless, he can come through there. He doesn't use the, she didn't make her money from cloth, but cloth was a channel. Cloth was what? She goes to church, you hope you know. Cloth was a channel. God can use any means. So when God shows you a business, he already has something he wants to do. If he tells to sell water, don't say this water is because he has something in mind there. The woman was sewing cloth, but he knew that one day he will use somebody to meet her. He said, Now me at my level, graduate, sell cloth for what? Is this pride that has killed many of us? Balak Balak, Eighty boy, where how much way you get inside? <laughs> Don't say one thing and do another thing. With that reputation, you will suffer amputation. Be known for integrity. Whatever it requires, develop integrity. Focus on integrity. Rise to your feet. Lord, I want to be empowered. I ask for wisdom. Not on wisdom of the highest order. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. I pray for the wisdom of God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let your wisdom answer to me. I pray in the name of Jesus that your wisdom answer to me. I ask your wisdom, O oh God. Grant me wisdom in the name of Jesus. I pray for wisdom, O oh God. Let your wisdom answer to me. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. 